these buildings just don't come along very often. Um, although we design stadia on a regular basis, this, this was special, there's no doubt about it. A, a Olympic Games in your, your own home city, that makes a huge difference. Um, I think that whilst we all philosophically believed in what SEBCO was trying to do, which was instead of changing the sport after the Games, change the building. Everybody bought into that. Intellectually, it made sense because that's where the Olympic movement was going and people could understand that. But the ruthless truth was that none of us really knew how to do it. Architects are trained to think long term. We're trained to think of our buildings as 25, 30 years lifespan. And so this was a very different set of circumstances where we were being asked to think about a building for just a short event and then do something with it after that. So it was a very, very different sort of thought process. The stadium itself is a fantastic site because um, the, the master plan effectively established that the, um, this is the largest parcel of land on, on the site. Um, still wasn't big enough to put something like, uh, you know, a conventional um, large 80,000 seat stadium but there. But, but still it enables us to, to use the whole island because there are rivers on either side of the of the site um, spectators approach over the bridges so we're able to use the whole island f as a venue rather than just the stadium structure itself. The brief we had was a completely unprecedented the idea that you could build a, um, a stadium that was suitable for the opening and closing ceremonies and of course the athletics events but be scaled down afterwards or be capable of being scaled down afterwards for to, uh, to be suitable for, for a, as much smaller athletics meetings so the real challenge was how to build for 80,000 and yet convert down to 25 if that's what was required. The building is actually a set of components, all of which go together to make the complete stadium, but don't actually touch each other. It's quite possible, for example, to take the entire roof off together with its little diagonal legs and to drop it in the middle of Hyde Park and nothing would move with it. It's a completely separate piece of structure. Um, we could take the entire upper tier off and nothing would move, nothing would have to come down with it. We can take all of the concessions out one by one and again we're not changing any structural aspect of the building. But most importantly it allowed our client to make decisions in a timely way so that we weren't pressing them for a decision on an item on the building that they simply didn't have an answer on at that time. The roof itself is structured a little bit like a bicycle wheel on its side with a compression truss around the outside like the rim of a bicycle. So all the forces are held in equilibrium within, within the roof structure and then the, the legs that support the roof are simply you know, slender steel tubes organised in a diagonal pattern to, to support the roof and stop it rotating. It's quite a sort of a, a functional basis for, for, for the sort of aesthetic of the building but it's really interesting how the, how the aesthetic then devolved, um, evolved and so the when we designed the lighting towers, we used the same kind of design techniques and so on. So the, ultimately the whole project appears as one. The lighting design and all of the roof rig was really a mixture of either lighting that was suitable for the athletics and digital film or the opening and closing ceremonies. And so we had to have a roof that was capable of carrying all those loads without having to put in a whole bunch of temporary structure. We wanted to make sure that the experience of visiting the stadium was as spectacular as possible. Um, the, the outside areas were intended to be a sort of summer garden party and I think that's pretty, ha pretty much how it's been experienced. We've had some fantastic weather. Um, and the inner, the inner bowl was always going to be a cauldron of excitement because of the action that's going on in there, whether it be the, the ceremonies or the athletics events. But we were able to control the, the space between the two, effectively the, the deep threshold. Um, we called that the black space and the wrap is the perimeter of that. So spectators pass through the wrap. Um, it's quite deep, it's two and a half metres deep and those uh, fabric blades come down to the ground. And what it does is everything inside that surface is then painted out black or is made of a, a black material. And therefore um, that real delightful process of going through somewhere and then feeling the kind of atmosphere uh, reduced before you then walk into the enormous seating bowl. That's something really special and, that we, and the rat really helps us do that. It's one thing um, designing this building and seeing 
being being with it through its construction. Our, our office was on site while we you know for three and a half years or so, but to actually see it in use um, and actually participate in its use was something else. You know, I sat in the upper tier when Mo Farah ran ran around and just clinched the, the 5,000 meter gold medal. Um, I'll never forget that. It's amazing. This is the sort of night that it's all worthwhile. This is, this is what building stadiums and designing stadiums is all about. When 80,000 in here tonight, I believe the audience around the world is about 300 million. And um, I mean, we build, we design, we think about buildings that are, they're three dimensional blank canvases. And, these guys come along and paint an amazing picture on them. It's brilliant. 